Okay, everybody, welcome to another edition of Friday Night Live. Um, the online chat show with the three worst hosts on Zoom, myself, Barry, and Martin. Um, it's great to see all. It's great to see all the the usual faces that we see every week, and it's also nice to see a few new faces tonight as well, and a few different names on the, in the boxes here. Um, that's great. Um, usual kind of rules, guys. Those of you that have been on a few of these calls know what they are for the for some of the newbies. If you can keep all your um, if you can keep all your phones and tablets on mute if, if possible. Uh, and if anyone's got any questions, if you can put them in the chat box, uh, we'll get we'll we'll read out as many as we can, if if not all of them. And then lastly, the one bit of advice for any new new guys on on these kind of Zoom calls, if you put your um, if you put your thing on uh, gallery view, is it gallery view, Barry? Speaker, speaker view. Yeah. Spe sorry, speaker view. speaker view. You put it on speaker view. That way, you'll only see the person talking and not every other, not all those. 25, 30 boxes on the screen at one time, okay? So, um, we said this week was going to be a busy one. Uh, on Wednesday night, we had a great webinar with the GB coach, Peter Russell, where he he, he spent an hour and a half talking us through the, 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 the fantastic journey that the GB senior team have been on in the last three or four years. Uh, tomorrow, we have Colin Grubb doing the third part of his goalie webinar. So for all goalies and coaches on the, the Zoom call tonight, we're hoping to see as many of you there as uh, possible tomorrow at four o'clock for Colin's um, third and final part of his goalie webinar. Um, but tonight, uh, we're very, very fortunate to be joined by Sam Duggan and Liam Kirk. Uh, we're going to hear their stories uh, about hockey, uh, what got them into hockey, where they've been and what they've done in their careers. I think they've both had fantastic careers so far for two very young men. Um, we can't wait to hear what they've got to say. So um, I'm going to introduce them both uh, very quickly. I'm sure they're going to be able to talk about themselves a lot better than I can. But firstly, Liam uh, Kirk came through the Sheffield Junior Development Academy, progressing to the Steel Dogs and then the Steelers. Then in 2018, Liam is one of very, very few British players who was actually drafted by an NHL team, uh, seventh round by the Arizona Cardinal, um, Coyotes. Um, he spent the last two years with Peterborough Peets in the OHL. Uh, he's played for GB at under 18, under 20 and senior. And now he's back with Sheffield for this upcoming Elite Series. Uh, Sam came through the Bracknell Junior System and then spent four years, am I pronouncing this right, Sam? Orebro? Yeah, that's a, that's a good effort. Great effort. <laughs> he spent four years with Arebro as Sam's career took a different path from a lot of uh, British junior players where he went and played for four years in Sweden uh, and played junior hockey in Sweden under 18 and under 20 over there for four years uh, he then came back to the Elite League and spent two years with Cardiff uh, this, he was back in Sweden again playing senior hockey and he's recently just come well say recently about a couple hours ago he touched down in this country again and he's going to be playing with uh, it's Coventry in the Elite Series you're playing with isn't it Sam? Yeah that's right yeah. Cool 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 okay well guys welcome to the call um, it's great to have you here uh, we're all really looking forward to hearing about your hockey journey so far uh, Martin Barry and I will have a few questions uh, before we open up to the floor, to, to, I'm sure all the kids on the call are going to have a lot of questions that they're going to look to get some advice and some tips from you guys. But uh, to start off with, why don't you both spend three or four minutes just telling everybody a little bit about yourselves, uh, how you started playing hockey, places you've played, experiences you've had, and so on and so forth. Who wants to kick off? Kirky, Kirky can kick us off. Set the tone. Put it on me. <laughs> okay, Liam, well, on you go. Yeah, so uh, as Lindsay said, I grew up playing Sheffield uh, pretty much my whole life. Um, you know, always was a was a Steelers fan as a kid. Obviously, my parents uh, they used to go and watch the Steelers when when they first started playing, um, and they've been fans ever since. And um, my brother started playing, my older brother Jonathan, um, and then I just kind of copied him and went from there. Really, uh, like I said, played in Sheffield, um, and then at sixteen, you know, there was a couple opportunities that. Uh, himself, Dougie, kind of opened up for me by going to Sweden uh, himself. And it was, you know, I could have looked at going that European route or uh, finishing my education uh, in England while, while playing with the Steelers or training with the Steelers. Um, so I decided to, to go that route. Um, uh, played there for 
uh, two years, played with the Steel Dogs uh, in the EPL at the time for, for the first year when I was 16, 17, uh, and then went and played uh, for the Steelers when I was 18. And during that time as well, I got to represent GB uh, of the under 18s and uh, under 20 level. Uh, and then uh, the year I was drafted, uh, I got to represent them at the men's level as well. Uh, then obviously spent the past two seasons in the OHL uh, and then now stuck at home with COVID. Well, not with COVID, but because of COVID. So, yeah, it's been a, it's been a really, seems like a long journey, but it's only just started my career. So, um, you know, in 10 years' time, if we do this again, I'm sure I'll have a bit more of more to say about it. But. Cheers. Sam? Yeah, so, I mean... Fairly similar to Sisnaki. Grew up playing in my uh, my hometown. Uh, I'm from like the Reading area, so grew up playing in the in the Bracknell program. Um, I always was. I, I got into hockey through through my older brothers. They I'm quite a bit younger from uh, quite a bit younger than them. So uh, by the time I was born, they were already well on their way to, to playing in their junior hockey. So. Um, just caught, sort of fo followed in, in their their footsteps. I always had them them two and my parents to to look up to as as role models, and uh, uh, that was really important for me getting into getting into the sport was having someone to look up to like that. Um, so yeah, I played in Bracknell until I was fifteen. Um, I sort of knew that um, as I'm sure a lot of the you you boys and girls on the call were aware of that. The, the facilities and and stuff like that in 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 the UK when it comes to ice hockey is is quite limited, which can be frustrating at times as times as a young player. So um, I I decided to if, if you know that if I wanted to really get the the best out of out of um, my my juniors and where I was at, at the time, a little bit different to Kirky actually really because he was later leaving the UK. Um, than me so it's I mean it's credit to to, to Kirky for for doing that well and, and seeing what he did staying in the UK for until he was 18 and there are a lot of good players that that never leave the country and, and have great careers but it was just the right thing for me uh, at that time spent four years in Orobro. Um along that time represented GB under 20s under under 18s um, one I think it, Two gold or well, one gold medal with the twenties, and we had a couple bronzes, I think, with the the eighteen. So it was a honour to play on those teams and had the time of my life in Sweden. Really, um, it was it was fantastic. I I managed to to make the the GB men's team in my uh, when I was eighteen, um, and we won gold in in Belfast, which was which is as well another highlight. And um, yeah, after that, it was right time for me to to come home. I felt I uh, felt and um, turn turn professional, and that's why I signed in Cardiff. And then, like uh, as Lynchy said, the past year with with COVID, things have been a little bit different. So, um, decided to to head back to Sweden for a year because I thought that was the the best best option for for me to keep playing. And yeah, so it's been a as Kirky said, it seems. <laughs> When you when you when you uh, you know read it out like that, it seems like a long time. But you know, similar to to what Liam said, that I hope there's a lot more to come. Okay, thanks, guys. Um, so Sam, sticking with you for now, um, you took a, a different path from path from others as a junior by trying your hand in Sweden, where most kids, when they if they have that opportunity that they tend to sort of lead to lean towards North America. Um, what made you choose uh, Scandinavia? What made you choose Sweden as opposed to the, the North American route that so many other people do? Um, so it's a good question. And I think at the time I was looking at my options in, in North America, my my brother, so the middle uh, middle brother, the, uh, the one that's in the, yeah, Tom, he, he had a career in, in Guildford and, and Bracknell and, Manchester and but he he moved away to North America when he was 14 um, and spent four years there so he had experienced uh, junior development over there and we'd heard some really good things um, about the Swedish setup and I just felt it it it's it would have suited it suited me a lot better and they they like to develop their young their young guys over there and and really focus and hone in on on skills development and 
I just felt that it was the right fit for me. And I think that's such an important thing that when you're young and you're deciding to move countries to play, you know, the sport that you love, that you feel that, you know, you're comfortable and you're, you're, you're going to, to enjoy the aspect outside of life, uh, outside of hockey, um, as well as, you know, dur uh, whilst you're on the ice. So, um, yeah, it just felt like the right fit for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I made the decision because uh, it's, it's done wonders. Well, it must have worked well for you because you spent four years there. Um, after your four years in Sweden, um, what was what was your main reason for returning to the UK with, uh, with Cardiff? Um, really, I think just seeing how the, la the, the Elite League has developed over the last, probably say, five or six years. You can see now that the top teams, Sheffield, Cardiff, Belfast, Nottingham, you know, well, it goes all the way down the league now. It's uh, you know the the bottom team can can beat the the top team on on any night. So um, just seeing how the leagues come on, you know, competing in Europe in the CHL, um, uh, it was a big it was a big uh, big draw for me to to come home and play. Being closer to home, of course, being away since I was fifteen, um, that was that was going to be nice. And as well, they offered to. To, to give me my degree as well. So um, that, to, to be able to get my degree along playing professional hockey is, has been a, a huge thing. Okay. And, uh, and after spending the, a bulk of this season playing in Sweden, um, what league would you say you preferred the most? The Swedish hockey or the or, or British elite hockey? Um, I'm, I'm going to say the British elite hockey, to be honest. Um, it's... It's, it's two different games completely. Um, I think the, the, the British games played quite a North American style on a, on a European size rink, which is a little different to, to most European countries or other countries that play on the same size rink. But uh, I just like the, the physicality and the, and the, the bit more, uh, the simple, the more simple style of play rather than the, a lot, a lot in Sweden is they'd prefer you to go backwards a lot of the time than go forwards and just keep the puck. And it's all about puck possession. So, um, I, I would say that the the elite league I I, I enjoyed more. Okay, thanks, Sam. Um, and Liam, um, you've probably been asked this question a thousand times. Um, tell us about the tell us about draft day. Tell us about the feeling um, that you had being drafted. Um, did you have an idea it was going to happen, and and how were you how were you informed that, that you'd been drafted in the NHL? Uh, yeah, it was um, a very long day. I'll say. Um, I think I remember obviously we coming up to the, the draft day, and I was saying to my my family, I didn't really want to watch it. I didn't really want to spend the whole day just focused on a screen, just worrying if it was going to happen or not. Um, so, I mean, we planned to go golf um, for the majority of the day and that never happened. As soon as the draft came on, it was uh, to the screen, like we said, we weren't going to do. Um, I mean, obviously, we weren't expecting first round, second round, third round. It was a bit more, you know, we were waiting for later on, but it seemed to just take forever. And then, uh, you know, I was reported, I could have gone anywhere between the fourth round and seventh round. So the fourth round comes around and it's just... Uh, just very nerve-wracking watching um, each team go by and slowly making the picks and not seeing your name. And I think I had 12 teams that I, I went to when I went to the combine that interviewed me. And it was every time that one of them teams come round, I'm like, okay, okay, this is it, is this it? Uh, you know, it, rounds kept going on. It got to the end of the sixth round and uh, I had not been picked at this point. And we were watching it on some dodgy um, internet YouTube stream. Uh, so an advert came on like a five minute long advert uh, and I remember my dad saying you best call Tomo you're going to be back playing Sheffield next season um, and it was just yeah it was just I think at that point you know, all the hope that and all the work that I put into just kind of hoping that this could happen kind of felt like it was lost for a moment uh, and then before the the stream came back on for the draft I had a text from uh, a player I played in Sheffield Green Debian um, and he just messaged me. He was at the draft, and he just said, "Congrats, Kirk! This is amazing. It's such a huge honor." 
and I have zero clue what's going on. So I'm I'm shooting him messages back, like, what is happening? Like I'm like I'm watching some dodgy stream, it's on an advert, and he says, You've been drafted 189th overall. I said, Where, where, where? It says Arizona. And it was just um very emotional. Um so was, was that was that was that due to like the time delay on the stream you were watching then or uh I you know I I don't think so because other than that the stream was pretty correct with the you know the drafts and everything on Twitter. I think it was just it was just a dodgy YouTube stream that came up with some random five minute advert for some Dyson Hoover or something or you know just some nonsense that so I literally didn't see it happen. Um so yeah, I just remember just you know my mom, my dad, my brother, uh, we were all there, and it was just very emotional, very proud of me, and uh, and then you know the the stream came back on, and there was a there was a whole piece on me, and it was very surprising for you, the seventh round pick, you never really get that big production or whatever, but obviously being from England, it, it you know it was huge, um, so, so yeah, just it was a really emotional emotional day, and uh, we never had a chance to celebrate it. Um, Pretty much, I got a call from from the GM at the time saying that you know you've been drafted. Congratulations! We development camp starts Monday. Where you're on a flight tomorrow morning at seven a.m. in London. And at the time, I was like, "Yeah, okay, no worries." And as soon as I go off the phone and told my dad, my dad's like, "London, there's no chance I'm driving you down to London for seven in the morning tomorrow. He's just not going to do it." So I had to message uh, the woman that set up the flights and say, "When time you move to Manchester?" And, like the NHL, they did it in a hobby, moved it from Manchester. So yeah, the next morning I was on a flight to Manchester, a uh, flight from Manchester to Arizona, and it was, uh, yeah, still really, now it doesn't really settle in. Um, the stuff that, you know, I've been through, I don't think it ever will until, uh, you know, I'm done playing hockey and I can look back on it then. But. No, it's, a, it's an amazing story. Uh, it really is. Um, so that you, you then went to play... Oh, you, you then went over and you've played two years in Peterborough uh, in the OHL. Tell us a little about the OHL and tell us a little bit how difficult it's been this year and uh, not being able to return to that team, which is, am I right in saying it's your final year in junior? Yeah, yeah, it would have been my final year this year. So, um, yeah, I got, um, I didn't really, I, didn't even, I uh, had no idea Peterborough were even going to draft me. The, like, the way the OHL import draft works, usually it calls from a few teams that express their interest and ask if you call them. And, uh, I had teams from the Quebec League, the WHL, uh, and then obviously the OHL. And the Peter was never really contacted me until the day before I got drafted. Tomo uh, and my agent uh, called and said, Peter, we're going to take you. So, uh, yeah, it was, um, I think my first year, my first three, four months were really tough. Just, um, you know, I went uh, off on a lot of excitement, thinking it was going to be... Um, an easier adjustment than, than it was and it was you know it was tough moving away for the first time leaving my family leaving my girlfriend and just leaving everything that I knew just to go to a completely different country to play hockey um, you know I moved in with a billet family and luckily they were amazing and uh, I was really fortunate to to, to you know to land uh, such great billet uh, you know parents and and the family's been awesome and we still keep in touch to this day you know they're like family to me so I, I got really lucky on that front Um uh, but yeah, I think it was just the adjustment to the hockey, the, um, the small of the rinks, the physicality of it, the pace of it was just definitely something that I didn't expect to be um, to be such a huge adjustment. And I, you know, I really struggled uh, on the ice and, and, and off the ice mentally as well. And it was a challenge, but you know, I, I stuck it out. Uh, one of the the best decisions I did was just sticking it out and, and just put, pushing through it. And luckily, I, I had GB twenties coming up, which was huge for me just to. To go and get some confidence, um, at the start of the the OHL season, uh, my first year, I was like four points in the first four games and thought, you know, I'm flying. And then I went 20 games without a point, and it was just something that's never happened to me before. Um, bar playing for the Steelers, so it was a it was a shock. Uh, and, and the GB20s came at the perfect time just to go see some some familiar faces and and to play and have a huge a big role and and to get a lot of confidence back. Um, and I finished my first year, um, you know, it's pretty successful and I was very happy with it and just, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to land a spot on the GB roster as well um, in the World Championships that year, which obviously just gave me a huge boost in confidence again. Um, and the second year I went back and um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be handed a leadership role as an assistant captain, which, um, you know, looking back on now was something that you, I'd have never thought would have happened two or three years ago, that I'd have been an assistant captain of an OHL team and 
uh, yeah, just had a really good year. Played with you know some amazing players, that, um, you know, best friends for life. And um, yeah, that year got cut short on um, a team that I think would have definitely made some history for Peterborough. I think we'd have definitely had a championship season uh, with the way we were playing and, and the team we had. So it is a uh, very unfortunate the way it ended. And like I said, this year not to be able to go back uh, is, is also very unfortunate. You know, I was looking to take on a another leadership role, uh, hopefully a, a bigger one than the one I had before and, and to, to have a good year and hopefully sign an entry level contract. But obviously that's been uh, kind of uh, just a change of routes, I guess. You know, I'm used to doing a different route than, than every other kid that gets to the NHL, so I'm used to it by now. Cool. Very interesting. Um, Barry, I'm, hug I'm hogging the microphone here. I, I, I no doubt you've got a couple of questions and we'll... Um, We'll let you get in before Kingy this time because he always seems to steal your thunder. I know. That means I can't use that excuse for not being prepared anymore. Yeah, yeah I know, <laughs> Barry. You're hiding last time. You've noticed I used that on Wednesday. Uh, every time, every Wednesday. <laughs> um, okay, so so Sam, um, I've, got, well, I've got two questions for both of you. So Sam first. Um, so junior hockey in Sweden, um, how did that prepare you differently for the the GB World Championships at eighteens and twenties while you were there, um, you know, having that experience in in good leagues in Sweden compared to what you you may have would have had in in England. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Excuse me. Um. Uh, I'd say the biggest thing was just the uh, the level that you you have to compete at every day. Um, over there in in, in that sort of hockey culture is something that. They take a lot of pride in your. I was lucky enough to play in the top um, top level at both under twenties and under uh, eighteen level in Sweden. So you're playing against the best kids in in a big hockey country um, every every night, and you're training against um, you know people of the same sort of caliber on your own team. So it's just that 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 compete level that you have to have every day is is huge and something i brought to 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 gb and so i felt i i could bring to to gb when i was playing with the junior teams there and uh just the speed that everything happens and and uh yeah the level that the game's played at it definitely puts you in a in a great position to to come and play for your national team um so yeah i would say that's that's the biggest difference when when you're comparing that sort of environment that I was in to maybe what some junior leagues are in in like in in other countries and maybe the UK as well. So yeah, yeah, I guess, and I suppose with with the best with the best will in the world, you know, if you were on an elite league team at, at seventeen, eighteen, the ice time that you would have not gotten <laughs> compared to what you did get in Sweden, it's it's night and day, isn't it? It's, that was yeah, that was again like. I, I did have the option to sign in the elite league, uh, you know, similar to what Kirky did, but I, I wanted to, to, to be around uh, one. I had an agent at the time and, and he, he was great with me. And when I, whilst I was in Sweden, um, I owe a lot to those, to those guys. And that he said that the biggest thing for people around our age, you know, 16 to 20 is that you are around in a good learning environment with people, your own age you know, uh, that you can develop with. Um, it, and it, I, I'm really thankful that I had the chance to do that in, in Sweden. Yeah. Okay. And then the the year that you got called up to the GB senior team, um, tell us a little bit about the, the Belfast experience, um, being the youngest player on the team and, and everything that went with that and obviously gold medal at the end. Yeah, it was... Uh... Yeah, it's a really unbelievable memory, really, because I got. I think it was I think the World Championships. If I'm if I'm right in saying they were in, they're normally at the end of the season, right? So probably like April, April May time, and it was yeah. the, the the November before. I just got a an email through from Andy Buxton, who's the GM of GB, whilst I was in. I think I was in my third year in Sweden, and I was having a, a, a decent year and. I, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was happy with where my game was at, and I, I knew, I, kn I knew Pete. I had Pete as an under twenties coach as well, so we, I'm familiar with, with, you know, Pete's familiar with me, and I think he just gave me a call and was like, 
you know, I want to give you the chance against, uh, we were playing two games against Norway in Nottingham and, and in Cardiff. So uh, played those two games and, and I, I played two really good games. I was happy with them. I think I actually played with Kirky on a line. <laughs> yeah, me, it was me, maybe. Kirky and uh, who, who else was Ma it? Maisie maybe? Yeah, I, I can't remember, but I played with, so I played those two games and had a, had a couple of good games, and then I got invited to the to the camp at the end of the season, and uh, yeah, I was really not expecting to be taken with to the World Championship team. I, it was just an honour to be there, involved in those games, and in training camp at the end of the year, and then after playing some more training games and having a full training camp with them, um, you know, they called me into the to the office at the end of, end of the. Actually, it's a funny story. They were, they were, you know, as teams do in these sort of situations, and I've been on the other, you know, on the other end of it where you you get told you're unfortunately not going. Um, they were bringing in guys and having meetings with them and saying, you know, unfortunately we're going to go with someone else, and you know, thanks, thanks for being, you know, doing what you've done for us. And I was sat pretty much in the locker room just waiting for that, for that talk with the coaches, like that they were going to take me in and. And sort of say, you know, thanks for thanks for, you know, being a part of it, but we're not we're not going to take you with. And then I remember guys, certain guys kept going in, and and then there was no more guys to be to be cut, and I was just sat there still. And Corey Nilsson came over to me, and I like looked at him, and he was like, "What are you looking at?" <laughs> he was like, well, "I was like, uh, he was like, yeah, you're on the team, good job." And that was it. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that was um, that was that, and then I yeah went to Belfast. We we had a great tournament. Ended up uh, being promoted, and yeah, it was definitely a, a, a memory of a of a lifetime. And what a group of boys that we've got, um, a, a, you know, in in that national team right now. Great group, and uh, hoping that I'm gonna try and do everything I can to to get back there this year. So. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, and uh, Liam. Couple of questions for you, and then we'll move on. And Martin will say, "You stole all my questions." Um, the year that that you played 18s, 20s, and senior in the same season, um, what was that? What was that like? And what what similarities was there across the, the teams? You know, in terms of um, the sort of the, the GB program as a whole, you know, and how it continues on through the 18s, 20s, and then the senior team. Yeah, it was a um, was a busy year that year for sure. I think I must have played in total over a hundred and something games. Um, obviously, you know, being an older guy in the, the under 18s team, which is just before the the, the GB men's. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, you know, I knew that more than likely I, I would be on that team and be a leader. So obviously, I, I was kind of you know working towards that at the end of the year. Um, the twenties team that year, if I'm correct, we meant oh, that was a Dumfries year, I think. Dumfries, Dumfries, yeah, yeah. Dumfries. So, um, yeah, obviously there was, there was a, you know, I was probably in my first, not even my first year twenties. I'd been on very easy, like you said. So I was a younger guy, and obviously, you know, I wanted to be on that team. Uh, the team we had looked like we, um, I mean, we should have won gold. Looking back on it now, yeah. um. You know, I, I wanted to be there, especially when you're playing in your home country. You know, you definitely want to be there and have that honour. So well, I made sure that I did everything I can to make that team. And and then the men's just kind of was similar similar to Dougie's, really. I had an email in November that was like, you're long-listed, there's interest. Um, and then it got one later on after 18, or just before 18, sorry, that said that you'd um, be invited to camp and... Uh, I think, you know, the GB system as a whole was you know, really well run. But I think when you get to the seniors, you realise it's a, a different level of just compete. Um, you have guys that have been in the team for years and you have guys that are on the fringe and you have guys that are just coming in and, and kind of getting the foot in the door. And for me, my goal was, as soon as I got there, was I'm going to get a spot on this team. It was without a doubt. I had in the front in my mind that I'm going to be on this team no matter what and I need to make it happen um, so yeah I just went in with as much as compete as I could and um, kind of lucky well I mean I got injured the first warm-up game we had 
Um, I had a pretty good practices, um, but in the first warm up game we had, I got injured. I took literally the first play I made, I got hit and just had a really bad shoulder injury. Nothing too serious, but just really bad bone bruising that prevented me from lifting my arm for a good week. And you know, to me, that was I was devastating. I thought that's it. That's that's my chance gone. I can't show what I could do in a game. If you know, what I mean, I've been injured first year. Doesn't look great, especially as a younger kid. Um, but I remember we we got back to commentary, uh, and the next day they had exit meetings, um, like Dougie said. But I got called in. Um, and I was just thinking, you know, um, this is it. I'm caught. You know, I gave it my best shot. Um, obviously, uh, and then when I went in, uh, Pete said, "How's your shoulder?" And I said, "Yeah, I mean it, it's hurting at the moment, but it feels better day by day." Uh, and he just said, "We're going to take you, go rest it up, come back in a week when we come back for for the next bit of camp. If it's good enough, you're in. If it's not, we won't take you." Um, and then Corey just kind of said. A bit more explicit than this, but suck it up. But uh, a lot more explicit. Like, like, oh, I'm sure you like, you know, Corey's like, um, yeah. And it was just, you know, that that week was just that. I remember just being uh, at the Steelers physio, I was just making sure I did everything I could just to get it healed, just to have that opportunity to come back. And it was almost 100. percent And luckily enough, uh, Pete trusted trusted it and, and took me. So brilliant. And that was the year in Hungary, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the year in Hungary. So, you know, I went out and um, actually I remember the, the camp The camp before we went, um, you know, I still had a bit of an injury, but Pete had me on, on the second power play and I didn't expect it. Uh, and I was really struggling just to, to kind of make simple plays, just the confidence was not there, obviously having the injury and then um, playing at GB senior level, it was just something I didn't expect and the nerves kind of hit me and I uh, wasn't doing too good. Uh, on practice so um, when we got to uh, Hungary to Budapest um, I was just a spare forward for the games um, so the first game I sat the bench the whole time and play in the second game uh, now I can say we luckily we were getting destroyed by Kazakhstan you know we were losing 5-0 and there was 10-15 uh, minutes left in the third period and Pete, me out, Pete put me out uh, I just thought it was my opportunity uh just to, to get back on playing, uh, played really well, really well. I thought it was really well. Some people might not, but I thought I played pretty well. Um, uh, and then ever since after that game, I, I played constantly. It was four flying uh, minutes, but even up to the last 10 minutes of the Hungry game, which was the gold medal game, I was still out on the ice at times. So, uh, you know, that was just huge for me just to know that, you know, if I keep just working, working and putting my mind to it, that, you know, I can play at that level. So. <laughs> As huge as the gold in Estonia. <laughs> well, I mean, it's different, <laughs> different, different. Um, you know, the tournaments are crazy. Any, literally anything can happen. You know, you lose five 0 to Kazakhstan and still end up playing for a gold medal game against Hungary, and it was just, you know, results go any way. And I remember it in Estonia. I mean, the gold medals in that jersey there. Um, it was my first gold medal, and it was just like um, we beat Lithuania. We beat. I mean, we had to beat Korea to guarantee a medal. Um, but we lost Poland 5-4 and Poland had to uh, beat Estonia uh, in regulation and Poland were by far the favourites and Estonia were <laughs> nowhere near the favourites. They were, um, I think they were playing for fourth, fifth, something like that. I just remember being in the stands that whole um, time and just, just hoping something happened and Estonia pulled it back and obviously it went into overtime and we just went nuts and it was just two different experiences. You get one where you're out on the ice and you have to take the game to overtime to win a gold medal and another one where a team has you know, the gold medals in, in their hands. You know, they have to lose it for us to get it. Um, but that was the first one I ever got and I was captain of that trip. So it was, uh, it was really, uh, really memorable. I think every time you play for GB, it's memorable, but especially when you when you win a medal. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, and changing, changing subjects slightly. So I think... I'm, I've heard you speak before about this, but the the combine day, um, and and how you got on, and how you felt looking at the other players round about you and other guys round about you, and how they were doing. Um, just a wee bit about that. Yeah, it was. Um, so the combine, I'm trying to think how it came around. So there's the director of NHL scouting uh, had my email, 
email me, ask for my phone number, and, and he called me one day and just said, "Oh yeah, we're we're putting you on a, a scouting list." This and that, and, you know, it was really exciting. And to be to be honest, I, I mean, I've never really told this or told Dougie this, but I owe a lot of this to Dougie in a sense that I remember when I was sixteen and Dougie was in Sweden. He on his elite prospects had. Um, prospect eligible for the, the draft for that year, for his draft year. I remember seeing that and thinking, like, it's possible, like, that, the, you know, they're looking. And I just remember that just motivated me even more that Dougie had it on his elite prospects. I was like, I need it on my elite prospects. So well, that was the next one. You're goal. welcome, Kirky. I know, I was like, I needed that on my elite <laughs> prospects. So Dougie's got it. I said, I need that now. I'm good. Um, and yeah, I just remember he called me and he said, you know, teams vote, whatever, and, and you're invited to come, man. Uh, and it was just really, really crazy just to get there um, into this um, whole new world. It's the first time I ever saw this, you know, the whole NHL kind of side of things. And uh, I remember you get, I flew from, from Manchester, I think, to New York, New York, Buffalo. I remember being connected to New York and seeing a lot of people my age. Uh, look like hockey players with hockey player like team logos on the bag um, and I thought this is getting real now and it was crazy I remember you get there you get given your bag with all your clothes I'm like a kid just chucking the clothes out trying them on send your photos back home it's like it's just stuff that you know you never never expected I remember one day I got in the lift to go down uh, and I stopped on floor and then Rasmus Dali walks in who went first overall but um, yeah and it was just like Hey, he's like, what's going on? I'm like, how much? Like, like you don't know who I am, but I definitely know who you are, kind of thing. He's just like, what is going on? Like, I'm here with all these these top prospects, and no one, no one, obviously, no one expected me an English kid there. So after a while of talking around at dinner tables and stuff, someone said, "Where are you actually from?" I said, "England," and they, they're like, "There's no way." He's like, "You're Swedish or something." Like they couldn't, like even though I had the English accent, like, no one wanted to believe that there's an English kid at the combine. So they all thought I was Swedish, Finnish, just anything but English. Um, so yeah, it was it was just something so surreal when you look at the names now. You know, I was in the same draft year as Quinn Hughes, Rasmus Starley, and you know them guys are out there playing. I was at the combine with them, uh, um, doing the same tests and interviews that they did. It was pretty surreal. Um, you know, something that you know I'd, I'd never forget. Brilliant, um, Martin. Have you got a couple of questions? I'll um oh, I'll, just ask, I'll just I'll just ask two, but unlike you, Barry, I can count because that was a lot more than two. Well, I had follow on questions. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, um, guys. So, uh, just a couple of things, just for the kids. So, Sam, Sam, you know, you went to Europe, and it's a wee bit different. Would you recommend that for other kids go to Europe, Sam? Um, and try out Europe as opposed to always looking towards North America. Absolutely, I would I would recommend it. I've got nothing but great things to say about Swedish hockey and and uh, how especially their their junior setup and the the pride they take in developing. I think I said it earlier, their young talent. Um, so absolutely, I would I would recommend it. I mean, you've got Kirky here who took the took another route, and and but and that's that's the main thing is. There's different routes for different people. It's don't expect, you know, I, I had role models and I had people I looked up to and I knew where I wanted to get and what I wanted to get out of the experience. And I just, I followed my, my, my heart and just sort of went, went with it. And that's, uh, Kirky said a, a couple of really great things is like, you do have to set a goal. And that's the most important thing and do everything you can on and off the ice to, to, to try and reach it. Um, so, but in terms of the hockey over in Sweden, absolutely 100%. I would, I would recommend top, you know, top to bottom. They, they like to develop their young, their young players and uh, yeah, definitely a route that I would, I would recommend. Well, how did you end up in Sweden? What was your route to get to Sweden? Um, it's funny, actually. I, uh, well, I have to, I have to think now because, as I was saying, I was looking at my North American options as well. And um, I actually got through Mark Beggs. I got put in contact with uh, uh, Kitchener in the OHL, uh, same league as Kirky's played in the last uh, two two years. And they were pretty much 
under the you know they they said look we're not gonna lie like we'd we'd love to take a chance if if we had the opportunity what is it kirk is it four imports over there two two so two imports two, yeah. yeah so like yeah. we'd love to take a chance if that if we had more like a more a better option uh, better option to to take more imports but i was coming from a uh, uh, england and people don't know you know about the talent that that is available in in the uk which i think is a, there is a lot of um and unfortunately it just doesn't get that recognition but what what their i don't i can't remember if it was their head coach or their gm he basically said what I can do is I can put you in contact with an agent that I know that works with a lot that I know works with a lot of Swedish uh, juniors that come over to the OHL. So his name was uh, it was two guys, Peter Wallin and uh, Martin Nilsson, and I got in contact with them, uh, and they were based in Stockholm, Sweden, and uh, well, actually not based in Stockholm, Sweden, but they were running a basically a camp for their clients, like their the kids that they they look after um in in stockholm and they said come out and skate and for a week and we will uh just see what we can do and I, I went out there i skated for a week and by the end of the week they signed and put six teams down on a list that um were on you know that they thought would be a good option for me good programs to to join and develop in in sweden and they said we'll we'll do everything we can to to help you get there so i was very very lucky in that respect but i would say the best way to 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 try and get somewhere is is just you have to try and make it a a full-time job to to get yourself out there and get in contact with people don't be afraid to reach out to people players other players other you know players that have been through it or because everyone has their own connections right that's how the world goes around so that's what I did. We we reached out, you know, me and my family reached out to um, to people that we know, and you, you, we went about it not being pushy, but you know, basically to say that, sat, you know, I wanted to get into a new hockey culture and, and and develop my game, and people were nothing but accepting of that because you you want to see young young athletes and young hockey players that want to get better, right? So that would be my piece of advice is to reach out. Don't be afraid to reach out to as many people as you can. And, uh, you know, for me, it just happened that I ended up in Sweden. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty much the, how, how I got there. Good. Jackie, um, question for you. You were the you know, first British team dra draft pick. Um, what's it going to take to get the second draft pick from the UK? I think, um, you know, I think I did put a lot of work and and time into my craft, but I think as well, you know, I, I was at the right place at the right time, you could say. Um, you know, I, I begged you, who helped Dougie, kind of was the one that told Tomo about me, um, and that's why the Steelers let me come skate with them and I ended up signing there. So, like you said, um, and that came from, like Dougie said, just putting yourself out there and, and making yourself available to to speak with these people and not being afraid to reach out yourself and and obviously you know it worked worked out for me and um but I think the main thing was just determination uh, and just believing in myself that was a big thing you know just having that belief that you know I could do it you know at 16 it was never on the back of it uh, never on the back of my mind or the front of my mind that um I could be drafted to NHL but uh you know I just kept working at it and working at it and just went goal at a time but my first goal was to play for for GB at a junior level, uh, then to to play in the elite league as a kid, that was always my goal, and I did that. And it was like, what's next? And it was the senior GB team, and it was what's next from that. And then, obviously, like I said, uh, Tomo, uh, who I met the Steelers, he reached out to a to a few people that he knew in the hockey world um, that was working in Chicago at the time. And then, uh, you know, I think it's like like if you said, everyone knows everyone in the sense in the hockey world. It's such a small world that. Um, if you put yourself out there, that work, that work can get round. And, okay. uh, you know, bit by bit, people kept, uh, like NHL scouts came to watch. And for me, that was just as soon as I heard there was an NHL scout as a game, it was another goal in my mind that was the next goal was get drafted and then work on from there. So I think just 
putting a lot of hard work and believing in yourself. That's the main thing. I was just oh. going to say, sorry, Martin, that like one thing Kirky said there, which is a really good point, is like, and especially like the biggest advice I'd give to the kids, uh, to kids in the UK is there's one thing like putting yourself out there and, and making the most of the connections, but it ultimately will come down to that work ethic that you put in and that determination you have every day to, to get better, whether, you know, because I'm sure, Kirky, you, you experienced lack of ice time in the UK as a kid and but there are always ways you can find to to keep developing whether it's off the ice in a in a field or you know you know in the gym or it's uh, there's always things that you can be doing to to work on your development so that would be that was a really good point Kirk you made yeah well I was just going to ask that um Sam you know what skills would you would you tell these young kids that are on this call to work on what would be your advice in terms of getting up and, and become a professional hockey what skills would you tell them to do and work on yeah um you know i i credit a lot of my success in my junior career and up until now to the sort of attitude and work i had off the ice um in terms of working out you know in the gym and uh, from from a pretty young age really um so i would say off the ice you know, you don't want to be going crazy in the gym and lifting a bunch of weights and, you know, that, that can be dangerous at a young age. But, you know, the little little things like speed work and, and, and plyometrics and different different stuff like that, that I really feel that it can benefit you massively on the ice. And it's something I've always done from a young age. And, and then on the ice, I think the fundamental skills, I know, I know, I mean, you, you learn things from game experience and you get things from playing games. But when when you're on the ice, um, you know, your skating, your shooting and your stick handling is are the three fundam fundamentals of any hockey player. And when coaches look at you, they will say, oh, how does he skate? How does he shoot? And how does he handle the puck? Um, so I would say those three things are, are huge. And again, that's something you can work on off the ice you know with you know you can do things that, that that will help you when once you get on the ice and I remember my brother telling me a good point you know because I would always say to my brother like oh you know it sucks I'm only on the ice three times this week and I remember him saying to me like okay what but what do you do in that in that hour on the ice what do you do uh, do this drill this drill this drill and he was like no 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 like when you're in when you're in line for a drill, stand there and stick handle yeah. while you're waiting in line. And and it and it was like it was like oh yeah, why don't I do that? And then I remember from you know twelve or thirteen, every line I was in waiting for the drill, I would stand there and stick handle because you're just making the most of the time. Because that unfortunately, I mean I don't do that now because I mean we're on the, I mean I'm I'm in the position where I can be on the ice every day, so you know that's something you don't need to worry about as much but um but still at times I, I do do that you know and and it, I think that was something that I took took forward that you know you might have limited time on the ice but there are always things that you can be doing to to, to develop those skills. Kiki anything you want to add to that about what these young kids should be working on? Yeah I mean I think Dougie, Dougie said it all really with the you yeah. know we all know we, being playing ice hockey in the UK that you, you are limited to ice time and um, you, know, you just have to make you know make sure that when you are on the ice you're doing as much as you can to, to, to get the most out of it. You know, I growing up I only until I was fifteen, sixteen I skated twice a week, maybe on a Monday night and doing it uh, an under twelve practice and under fourteens right after. So you got what, three hours in total a week? Um and like, the thing for me was just making sure I did as much as I can, I think, um, away away from the rink, sorry, doing as much as I could away from the rink uh, as well as on the ice. Uh, like we said, stick hand, you can stick hand go outside, you can you can go anywhere with the gloves, a ball, golf ball, puck, and just stick hand up. Make sure you do 20 minutes a day, uh, you know, it all adds up. Uh, like you said, plyometrics, obviously, I wouldn't advise any young kids to go out there lifting lots and lots of weights because you are likely to, to hurt yourself or, you know, even India Grove, stuff like that. But just doing certain, you know, jumping exercises and, you know, I'm pretty sure now in every every academy or um, you know, hockey club around the UK, they have some sort of 
off ice trainer that is there, or they have contact with off ice trainers that are there to help uh, in that side of the game. But I think for me on the ice, the biggest thing that I've learned in the past two years is skating. Um, your skating is the biggest uh, thing you need to work on. And on the ice, it is such a huge part of the game. The game gets faster and faster every year. And, um, you know, my skating from when I was 18 to what it is now, so much different. Um, just the way I use my edges. And I mean, that's stuff that I don't think I would have ever been taught in England. Um, but that's stuff that hopefully, you know, one day when hockey is done, that's something I would like to, to, to go around and even now teach, teach the kids uh, around the UK. Um, I think skating is a really big part of the game. So every time you're on the ice, you make sure you focus on skating hard and making sure that you're, that your strides to the best it can be. Okay, great, great. Uh, we practice every Wednesday if you want to pop up for no problem at all. <laughs> Just near Glasgow, it's not far. Um, all right, I think, Lynch, I think we need to move on to some questions now. I think we'll get the, the kids' question. You want me to kick it off, Lynch? Oh, not just kick off. You're doing them all tonight. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> right. Okay, I'll start then. Um, okay, uh, here's Collie. He's got a question. Liam, why did you change, choose number 14? Uh, so, like I said before, my brother is the reason I played ice hockey. He started and I always copied him and his number that he used to wear when he was younger was 14, so I just kind of stole it from him. Uh, so it's just a number that's always been with me. He doesn't wear it anymore because of that reason, because I stole it. <laughs> he, knows what he, wear, he now wears a 90, but um, yeah, it's just something that you know I like to to know that I'm wearing because it just reminds me, obviously, of my brother and how much of a role model he was to me. Sam, what number do you play? Uh, my number's 16. Any, any reason? Um, to be honest, no. Not, not really. I, I just really like... I always make a joke and say to the, to the guys, I look I look like a 16. So. Yeah. 16, out, 16 out of 10. 16 out of 10, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Harris McMillan, his first question of 50. Liam, if you were to choose any NHL team... To go to what one? So he's actually just asked you which your favourite NHL team. Um, I don't know. I'm supposed to answer this. Uh, ah, I mean, I should yeah. should should say Arizona, but uh, I've always been a fan of Edmonton, and uh, you know, really in the past three four years, I've really enjoyed watching the Leafs. Uh, just the, the talent they have is just pretty exciting to watch every time they're on the ice. So. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, another question from Liam. What was your routine for off on ice and off ice time? Did you do what stuff did you do um, on and off the ice? Uh, so oh, I mean, I'll, yeah, like I said, on the ice, um, we only had three hours a week, two practices. So you know, we were just doing the drills and just making sure that every time I did a drill, I did it to the best I can. And like Dougie said, when you when you have a chance to stick handling in the line, do some stick handling. Um, shoot an extra couple of pucks if you get a chance. Uh, I know obviously coaches don't like that, but <laughs> if you can, just pop one in the back of the net. Uh, and then off the ice, it was the same thing, just shooting in the back garden uh, and stick handling. So. Okay. Harris, McMillan, um, we'll ask Sam first. Sam, what position do you play? Uh, I play uh, I play either left or right wing. I can left play. Left or right wing. Yeah. Kathy, what position do you play? Uh... Well, at the moment, left wing, but I used to play centre. And then last season, I also played right wing. So Any, any reason moment. why you used to play the position you're in, or is it just natural? Um, <laughs> go ahead. Go. You go, uh, uh, I, got, I, I actually went to Sweden as a, as a centreman. And then after my first year, my coach told me that my... my <laughs> He didn't like me as a sentiment and he thought that with my with my uh, skating and my physicality that I would be better on the wing. So um, he moved me there and I really enjoyed it. You know, uh, you can you can think about going forward a lot a lot more uh, than than as a sentiment. Um, but at the same time, you still have some defensive responsibilities to to take care of as well. So yeah. that I got I got moved there and and. Just sort of went with it, and I'm um, happy I did because I think it's definitely suited suited me. Yeah, Kirk, can you get any? You you always played wing or? 
He, no, so I, like you said, I played centre, and then the year I went to the OHL, uh, I got told I pretty much had no choice. I was playing on the wing, and um, you know it was a big eye opener how much a centre, how much responsibility a centre actually has. They have such a big um, impact in the game, and you know being in England, I never really had to, to play centre properly. It was more just offence. So, uh, no, I have a lot of respect for people that, that play centre now and now out because it's, it's a lot of. Um, hard work and uh, any kids out there listening now and you want to play centre get ready but when you turn pro it's a lot of work you've got to be really responsible and skate a lot more than you do when you're on the wing so I think we've just got the next one's just a comment um, if you ever fancy coming to play for the Cope Ridge Red Wings they could squeeze you squeeze you in the fourth line so there you go yeah wonder what the pay's like now um uh, next question from Cameron Bain to to everyone is: What is your favourite country to play hockey in? Ooh, that's a tough. Well, I've only played. I mean, I've I've had the chance to play in different countries with with GB. Um, I enjoy playing in in the UK. With you know, I think the UK has such a passionate fan base. And you can see what sort of crowds the elite league get, and how loud the games are. Of course, loved playing in Sweden too. I have a lot of lot of time for for Sweden. Uh, so I, I feel I feel bad. Well, I, I would have to say the UK just because it's 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 where I'm from, and uh, you know, and and playing in front of your your home, you know, your home country's crowd every night is uh, no matter what team or what arena you're in. Uh, they're extremely pr- passionate, and uh, so yeah, I'd have to say the UK. Okay, yeah. Uh No, Dougie does make a great point about the UK. It is uh, you know, it's always nice to play at home, but I think for for me, you know, playing in Canada was definitely a crazy experience. Just I think I'm more suited to that style of play now. Um, uh, I think that's where I prefer. Other than that, I'd probably say if they if they treat the players like they did when we were there in uh, in Korea. Korea was pretty nice. We got checked like really for that tournament. So that's so that cool playing Korea. That wasn't that wasn't a bad tournament. We got checked pretty good every game. You yeah. come into a little lounge and his his coach and so were you there sport and telling you the coaches were. I remember it was just um it was pretty um, easy easy living for a player and we were only kids, so that wasn't bad. Okay. Next um question from Harris. Would you ever come to Glasgow to play? Is that Who's this for? I think I think we'll just ask it to both. I mean, would you ever come and play for Glasgow Clan? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would never, I would never rule any anything off the table. Yeah. I would never, never rule anything off the table. Glasgow, I've got a, a a great great team. I've heard good things about the organisation, and uh, you know, great city. I really like whenever we've been there with Cardiff and and been able to see a bit of the the. The areas around the rink, it, it it looks really nice, and so yeah, I would never, I'd never rule anything out. But uh, yeah, now I'm 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 happy where I'm at. So uh, we'll we'll have to see in the future. Kathy, Glasgow, you know. Uh, I I think you know, being realistic, my girlfriend does not show up about the idea of living and playing in Glasgow. She loves that idea, so <laughs> uh, yeah, she she really wants to. Uh, she sees lots of pictures. She follows lots of hockey wives and stuff, and, and she says Glasgow is up there on one, one of the places she wants me to play. So I mean, if she has the choice, you know, I could could end up there at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, next question: Have you ever any learned any other languages playing a week? Yes, I'm fluent in Swedish now. So again, that's like another thing that that experience gave me was not like if we just put hockey aside, like the whole life experience of living in, in Sweden. And I was in such a beautiful place as well in Orobro. Um, and then this past year I've been in Stockholm. So, uh, and yeah, so I, I'm fluent now. So that's given me you know that aspect of it which is amazing like, it wasn't something that I had planned going there it wasn't like I'm gonna have to learn the language everyone's got such good English there so I mean when I first got everyone would speak English for me but then just throughout the four years I picked it up and yeah I can I can fluently speak it now so that's something I'm really proud of and and uh yeah so 
that was that was that was a great thing about being in being in a different you know country. Yeah, Kaki, you just stick with English. Yeah, I'm fluent in English in, in yep. Yorkshire. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, good, good stuff. I did I did learn a little bit of Swedish, but only like how to say hello and where's where's my coffee and paycheck. That was pretty much yeah, it. paycheck. Let's hear it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Liam, who's your favourite? This is a question from Rory McAllister. Who's your favourite professional player and why? Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't really have like a, a diehard favourite. Um, you know, I, when I was younger, watching Conor McDade when he first came into the league was pretty cool. Um, to see what he did at such a young age and what he does now is exceptional. But I mean, I like watching you know, all all kinds of players just just trying to take bits from their game. Austin Matthews, the way he shoots, McDavid, the way he skates. Um, you know, they've all got different aspects that I, I try and try and do my best to emulate. But obviously, not as good as they do. Yeah, Dougie, you got a favorite player? Um, pretty much the same as Kirky. Exactly what he said. I mean, I don't have a specific guy i i loved watching jerome ginler growing up um well, it's a bit of a different one i know but uh just the way how hard he played and how you know how much of a leader he was in in calgary um and then in pittsburgh i think towards the end of his career um right-handed shot like like me winger um so i always enjoyed watching him play but Similar to Kirky, I, I I like a lot of players. You see how McDavid, Matthews, Crosby, you know all these Kane, how these guys play the game, and it's uh, it's pretty amazing to watch and try and take little things out of each guy and and emulate it. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, Harris is asking. I we've covered this, Harris. So we're just going to skip this one. He's asking emotions when uh, walking through you when you get drafted, uh, Liam. But I think we've I think we've covered that one. Um. Next one, um, from Rory McAllister again. Um, we'll go to Sam first, he's on the screen. Uh, how many hours do you train each day on the ice? And then do you still train off the ice? Um, so, yeah, in, in my normal routine, like obviously this past year has been really strange yeah. with a bit like in Cardiff, we're able, we have the ice all year round. So I'll probably take maybe three or four weeks off after the season and then I'm on the ice and in the gym Monday to Friday um, on the ice for about an hour a day and hour and a half you know and then in the gym for a similar time probably probably an hour in the gym every day so Monday to Friday have Saturday Sunday off um, sort of to rest and recover to go to go Monday again and that that will be how my summer looks and then during the season um on the ice every day um and in the gym probably two or three times a week just to sort of keep things in check and uh, make sure the body's healthy and that um nothing too strenuous in the gym throughout the season but uh, you can find ways to sort of keep your strength up in the gym um and then with it just depends on game schedule you might have a busy game week you know where you play saturday sunday wednesday so there's there's not much time so it, it, it varies throughout the season, but yeah, that would be pretty much for me. Okay. Yeah, pretty pretty similar to Dougie um, in, in the summer. Obviously, the summer's been different, but um, yeah, I just train usually five days a week on the ice, maybe two, three times a week. Um, and then weekends off and then in the season, like Dougie says, you, you practice pretty much every day, bar a few days off after games and, and gym twice, three times a week. Obviously, like you said, depends on your schedule. I think every yeah. pretty sure it's pretty yeah. similar for, for around the whole hockey hockey world. So, um, like I said, you, you, you're still working out just to make sure that yeah you're staying and you keep strength that you that you did all summer. So. Okay, great. Um, so next one from Cooper Crawley. What is your most memorable moments in hockey? Is that a goal or injury? What's your kind of memorable moments? Um. Every 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 winning team I've been on is a is a is a memory. Uh, the the gold medals with GB, uh, you know, all the GB experiences, as Kirky mentioned earlier, are, are memorable. Uh, it's always an honour to represent your country. Um, so the the medals and the boys and the teams I've been able to be a part of there and being able to captain um, 
a few GB teams has, have been really memorable. And then uh, recently, the, the playoff win against uh, in Cardiff uh, season before last, my first year in Cardiff is is a huge um, huge memory. And then there's there's personal things that you you remember, like your first professional goal. I remember my first goal in Sweden. Um, so yeah, that would be it for me. Okay. Okay. Um, Cooper Collie's got a wee, a wee comment. In London 2018, I was at a game against Lafayette and I saw Liam and the whole game, I was just asking, when's Kirk going on the ice? Can you bench in that game, Kirk? <laughs> no, that, that'll be the, the game where I took the, the injury the first hit. Yeah, yeah. If it's the, the one in Milton Keynes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he was asking for you the whole game. Cooper Collie, biggest fan. I was in the stands with a Papa John's, that's where yeah, I am. <laughs> right, so, Rex Cargill, uh, Sam, how old you? How old were you when you went to Sweden and how difficult was, was it for you to settle in a different country? Were you living with a Swedish family or, or how were you living? So um, I moved when I, I, I think, I always get this wrong. I think I just turned 16, like a couple of days after my birthday, I left. Um, I wanted to get my GCSEs done um, and then I moved straight after. Uh, my my mum actually moved with me for, for the first, I, I lived with my mum for the first year and then dad came out towards the end. Uh, he wasn't able to come over straight away with work and then and then I moved into the way they do it in Sweden is from 15 or 16 they put guys into apartments and you live by yourself so from 17 I was living with a teammate in an apartment and uh, my parents ended up moving moving back to the UK um, but it was great to have my 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 mum there and and then dad too towards the end of my first year with in just helping that I didn't have to worry about, you know, cooking, cleaning too much. I could just worry about settling in because, as Kirky said, it's a big adjustment when you move countries to, to play to play hockey. So, you know, once I found my feet after my first year, they moved back, and I, I sort of lived by I've lived by myself since then. So, um, yeah, no, it, it does come with challenges, but as Kirky said earlier you know, you have to decide how much you, you really want it in those situations, how much you really want to develop and, and you've just got to, as, as best you can, stick at, stick at those things and uh, because it, it will pay off and, and, and you'll, you'll really be glad that you, that, that you did and I'm glad that I stuck it out. I'm sure Kirk is glad he stuck it out in the long run. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, have you ever scored any memorable hat tricks? That's one for Kirky for sure. He's a lot. Yeah, I scored 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 a few. I just scored a lot when I was young playing in, in England. But I think I scored maybe only one um, in Canada in the OHL. I don't think I've scored. Well, I mean, apart from the Steel Dogs in, in the streaming series, I don't think I've scored one since that. So. Yeah. Uh, well, scoring a hat check in the OHL must be memorable. That must be good. Um, Finley Sawyer's wants to know. Have you ever changed your equipment brand? I think he means have you moved from Bauer to CCM or done anything radical like that? Yeah, uh, a lot of times I'm pretty much a, a mental midget when it comes to um, like how my brand and sticks and stuff like that. If it doesn't work one game, I'm looking for something new. Um, but at the moment, I've been I've been pretty loyal to uh, to Bauer. Obviously, with Huey been been a Bauer rep. Um, I've been in Bauer sticks for. For a good um, a good couple of years now, and uh, and just went back to Bower Skates recently from Trues. So I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, pretty loyal, especially when Hugh is playing with you, trying to put it in your face that you want you in a Bower Bower stick. So yeah, Biggie. Um, yeah, I mean, I I'm not that fussy when it comes to equipment. I've always had Bower skates, um, and I I do generally like the Bower stuff. Uh, the most when it comes to sticks and gloves and stuff but uh, this past year I used Warrior because um, the team was sponsored by Warrior uh, my first year in Sweden I used Easton because they were the team was sponsored by Easton so uh, but I would say most of my career I've been with Bauer and uh, I have Bauer in Cardiff and so uh, yeah I would, I would say that I'd like to stick to, to Bauer but I'll get what I'm given I'll use what I'm given okay 
Um, next question from Cooper Colley. Were you shocked when you were chosen for Team GB? I think we've covered quite a lot of that. So um, just was that a shock to you? Yeah, yeah, it was a shock. And, and you know, of course, I really wanted to be a part of that team. And I worked really hard to to, to get that opportunity and and took the opportunity when it was there. But of course, it, it was a shock when when I when I found out, uh, you, you know, sometimes as a young guy, you don't know how things are going to go when you're in that sort of situation. But uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a, a great, a great shock. So, Yeah, Kirky, you shocked when you get the big call to the senior team? Yeah, definitely. Uh, like, like Dougie says, you know, it's always time to play for GB and it's a little different to how it works at the, the junior system. Junior, you get an invite and a trial, whereas GB, you get long listed and then uh, you know, if you're lucky, you get an invite for, for a camp and you have to do what you can there to impress. So you know, it was definitely... Um, very shocking. Um, obviously, like I said, the first year when I had the intro, yeah. I expect it. So, uh, but yeah, okay. it's definitely um, it's an exciting feeling when you get it. Yeah. Uh, next question from Raymond Simpson. Um, I'm sure you're both well versed in road road trips, hockey. What do you do to pass the, the time on road trips and hockey? Um, I just. I generally have my headphones on, listen to some music, uh, have a laugh with the boys. I enjoy, I love road trips to, they can sort of bring a team closer together when, when you're on, on the road for a while yeah. and you, uh, you know, so just enjoy it with the guys, your, your, you know, your, your best mates around you and uh, yeah, just, just chill out really. Don't exert too much energy because you're probably going to be having to play a game uh, at the other end. So, uh, but yeah. Okay, Kaki. Road trips? Uh, yeah, I mean, it varies really on, on a length of trip. If it's a short one, I'm just usually headphones in with some music, but anything more than a couple hours, and I, I like to play cards and just chat and yeah. uh, sometimes get a little bit too energetic in the card games, but when it's worth money, <laughs> then you've got to But yeah, just I like, like to do a little bit of both depending on the, on the length of the journey. Yeah. Um, next question uh, Have you ever that suit flipped a goalie in a shooter or in game time? And can you do the Michigan? No one knows. I don't know. Kids no do. Yeah, I know. I I'm the exact same. I've never done the Datsuk flip, but I don't know how kids can get the puck up on their stick so uh, early nowadays. I can't do any any tricks to this day, so I don't know. No, I know. Cool. Me neither. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rudy wants to know what brand of sticks do you prefer and what flex? Uh, yeah, so I'll I'll... go ahead. Yeah, I'm a, a bower guy, uh, and I use a pretty soft stick. I use 77 flex just because I'm a little bit guy, and I just really like a soft, whippy stick just for a quick release shot. I uh, I use the bower Nexus. I'm a bower guy as well, and I use a 80, 82 flex, so it's right in the middle of 77 and 87. So. so that is, yep, good, good. Uh, next question uh, from Blake. Uh, any advice for a seven-year-old who loves hockey and dreams of playing hockey in Sweden and Canada? Go ahead, Kaki. Uh, yeah, like, like we said earlier, just just make sure you believe in yourself and you have that determination and you put that work ethic in. Yeah. Um, just, just, just keep. You know, like I said, just you got to bet on yourself in all situations, but you know, at the same time, make sure that you're working hard and. And you're putting in that time and effort, uh, you know, because you know things just don't get given to you. You do have to put that work in to, to make it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that will be the advice. Yep. Do you any other advice for a seven-year-old? Yeah, just enjoy it too. Everything that Kirky said there is spot on, and then just make sure you do all of that with a smile on your face because, you know, if you're able, the end goal is to to play hockey. Is you know, I think me and Kirky are lucky enough that it's our job to to play hockey now we, we're doing what we've always loved to do as our as our sport and it's our job now so it's uh you know it's 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 pretty um that's a that's quite a, a a great thing about about putting in the work over the years that you can finally come to that um in the sport and so yeah just enjoy it enjoy the process and exactly what Kirky said yep next question from Cooper Colley what sort of road hockey? I think he means street hockey. Uh, drills do you recommend for a nine-year-old? His next question is: Did you know that you're both on NHL 21? 
uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's true. Off drills, just um, do anything really. You could literally just get a golf ball, go up and down your street, put a few pucks out, like cones, go around them in and out of them. Just anything you can think of, really. Use your imagination, um, go on YouTube, anything like that. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, 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 it's um, very similar to, to what Kirky said. Uh, yeah, okay. You, know, you can do you can do a lot with 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 not much equipment so you know get some roller blades on maybe as well if, if you've got some and you can wheel around in those and uh, yeah just uh enjoy it and you know work on those 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 fundamental skills that you can do off the ice yeah um he also wanted to know Liam did you play any games with Arizona uh if you count rookie camp games then yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if you count them then yeah we'll count them Kirky we'll count them right um, Crawford Murray, Lanarkshire Lightning, to Liam, have you ever met Biz? Is that Paul Bissonette? Well, at the Coyotes camp? Uh, no, I've not not seen it. I mean, he's been there a couple of times, I think, but I've not, not seen him. No, but okay. Met Bill for real. From, from Cooper Coley, is, do you have any superstitions? Cooper Coley is the new Harris McMillan tonight. Yes, he's taking over, isn't he? <laughs> What, what was the question? Sorry. Do you have any superstitions? Um, I I don't really, to be honest. I I I, I feel that well, this is just my opinion. I play with guys. I've a lot of friends and teammates over the years that have crazy superstitions, and you know whatever works for them. But I've always found that if if I have to, you know if I've had superstitions, I just waste too much energy trying to. Uh, thinking about those things rather than just playing what's in front of me and just sort of getting ready and I have one that's I always put my left side on before my right so it'll always be my left skate and then my right skate and then okay. left chin pad right chin pad it's just a little routine I would say more of that you know quite easy to control and just yeah. uh just a routine that I that I stick to okay Kathy any superstitions uh yeah, like I said earlier, I'm a bit of a mental midget when it comes to little things like that, like sticks and, and stuff like that. So I just kind of just like to do what happens. If, if the game before worked and we did well and played well, I'll kind of do the same thing. If not, I'll change something up. I'll not do, I'll not play football before the game or yeah. um, do a different stretch routine. I like to kind of do the same thing on the ice every time, skate the same route. And I'm saying as Dougie put my left side on first. I don't, I don't, I, to me, I don't think that's more of a superstition. I think that's just more just like a subconscious, just kind of, that's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't really, I think that's just the way it is. But other than that, just little things like keeping it the same if it worked the night before and if, if not, change it up. Next one from Carter Hamill. Um, what is the top U18 league in Sweden? I think that's uh, for you, Dougie. Yeah, J, it's called uh, J18 Elite. So uh, J18 Elite, and then if you come in the yeah that that's the top, and then the the under twenties is uh, Super Elite. Super Elite. J, hey, J18. Got, but certain these creations, would you recommend moving abroad to make it pro? So I think I think both of you have done different things. Kirky, you stayed at home, you got drafted. Do you you went away? So I don't think there's a right or wrong way. You know. What? No, I, I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong way at all. I think me and you know. If, Kirky had unbelievable has had unbelievable success, and he stayed in the UK. So yeah. I'm not saying that what I did was the right way, and what he did was the right way. You know, I think I mentioned it earlier. It's different. It will be different for each of you. So don't feel any pressure. Um, you know, no one should feel pressure to do anything. Um, but just to, to, you know, do what's do what you feels right, and make a decision and and stick to it and have your goals and, and work towards them and, and just sort of see where you end up after that. If you take care of your work ethic and 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 your attitude, then, you know, you can you look at Kirky. He was drafted, you know, first British player to ever have done that. So, you know, it, it, can, it can go so many ways for different people. But, you know, uh, it helped me get to where I am today. So... You know, and I'm sure Kirk will, would agree that him being in the States is, is how, uh, or in Canada has is, is helped him. So, yeah, it's definitely an option to look at. Yeah, good, good. Next Sam, patient. how many how many tiers are there in the under-18 and under-20 leagues in Sweden? 
So if I'm right, in, I think there's in the J18, it's the elite is the top one. And then there's J18 Division 1, J18 Division 2, I think. Um, so there's like three tiers. And then each league has like 40 odd teams in. It, there's so much hockey in Sweden. And then under, uh, under tw excuse me, under 20s is super elite. And then under that is J20 elite. And then under that is J20 Division 1. I read somewhere this week there's 350 junior clubs in Sweden. Yeah, something crazy like that, yeah. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. What have we got? 11? <laughs> <laughs> 350. Um, uh, so, Joe, what sort of team did you do in your off-season? Uh, I think I think it varies. I mean, for different people, everyone has different goals, right? Um, like me, I'm I'm a smaller smaller kid frame wise, so for me it was all about putting weight and size on, uh, and just kind of getting sh in stronger and faster. Um, just kind of having your own goals. That's the main thing, uh, and making sure that you, you work towards them and you do everything you can. You know, I put weight on. Dougie has to lose it, so. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see about that in the corners next 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 <laughs> month. Okay, okay. Um, Cooper Coley. Again, Cooper, this is a good question. Guy, yeah, I would take the Fifth Amendment on this one. What's the pee like? I'll just say it's good. <laughs> just say it's good. It just depends where you are. It's good. Great. Yeah. Good. That's, that's, one for, that's what again. That's one for Kirky. Minimum min, min wage. Minimum wage. You'll figure it out one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, Harris wants to know how do you say I love hockey in Swedish? Jag älskar hockey. There you go. There you go. There you go. Brody wants, Brody Key, are you looking forward to playing against Russia in the opening game? What are you doing to prepare for it? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we. I, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to be with that team or not yet, but uh, you know if I do get the opportunity, uh, obviously it's top of my list right now is to be on that team after this streaming series. Uh, so, but I mean, if I get the chance, that will be unbelievable to play against those sorts of countries. Oh, Kirky had a taste of it last year. I'm sure you can talk a little bit more about it, but. Um, yeah, just excitement to, to see what it's like to play against the best players in the world, really. Yeah, like like Dougie said, no nothing's ever guaranteed. So me obviously take it step by step and day by day. Right now I'm focused on the um the spring cup here and then the, the elite series and then hopefully uh, you know do enough to, to be invited to G B camp and hopefully make that yeah. team. Um and, and then yeah, just like I said, I, I experienced that the year before last um, uh, and it was you know very challenging and something that was you know uh, unbelievable when you look back at it um, so yeah definitely especially with no relegation yeah it'd definitely be nice to go do it again and um, you know get to play that level again Good um, Another question from Cooper Keyboard is on fire Cooper um, Were you really excited when you played against USA? Because Pete said lots of people really excited to play against Patrick Kane. I would imagine that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I, I, fortunately, that game I, I got scratched, so I didn't get to play that oh, game. Yeah. I, I got to play. I got to play Canada, but it was a lot of game all the time. And Pete thought it was best that I rested up for the, the other games, so uh, yeah, I got scratched that one. So thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it was it was cool to uh, it was cool to obviously watch and we got to play Canada and. and in Germany and playing against strike title and players like that and it was um, it was crazy our locker room was right next to uh, Canada's so we, we saw them pretty much every day coming in out of the rink and it was surreal um, something that you know I don't think we'll ever forget and, you know, this year we want to go and do the same thing yeah were you, were you there were you, were you there in those games no I wasn't wasn't there last tournament so oh, no. get in there this year do you get in there this year okay. um, from Richard Bar down or five home you. I'm a big <laughs> five hole guy to be honest I love it I love a five hole goal the old uh, uh, I've had a few this year where I've been aiming bar down and it's gone five hole but I'll take it the and, best uh, players are the lucky players Sam 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it's always nice to put one under the bar. To be fair, it is it's a good feeling. But I'll take I'll take whatever I'm whatever I'm given. Yeah, Kaki. Yeah, like like Dougie said, I used to be a bar down guy in junior, but now I mean, last year I played with a. Uh, he's called Nick Roberts, and he, he went and played for the Leafs in the, in the playoffs uh, in the bubble and scored a goal. So, he, you know, he scored fifty something goals last year, and thirty five of them were five all. Um, so I kind of took a leave from his book and started shooting five all. And I think when you when you when you start playing pro hockey, you learn the game becomes a lot more about percentages and. You know, if you, if you aim five on and it doesn't go in, there's going to be a rebound. Where if you go the bar down and it goes over the net, then your coaches aren't going to be pleased with the puck swimming out of your zone. So, yeah. you know, more of a percentage guy now. Yeah. Uh, Carter Hamill, uh, I'm 16, about to finish GCSEs this year. Should I move away or stay at home in Belfast to make it pro? Um, go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I think I think... You know, I think definitely hear from our stories and, and listen to our experiences. And, uh, you know, but I think at the end of the day, the decision, you know, comes down to you and what you think is best. Like like Dougie said earlier on, everyone can take different routes and no, no one's journey is the same. And, um, you know, as, as long as you have the goal in mind that you want to achieve and, and you have different opportunities, I think do do the best to look into them as much as you can and, and see what is the best fit for you. Because like, like, like we said, um, you know, everyone's journey is different and, and certain situations might not be uh, right for you and they could be right for other people. So uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't let anyone else uh, make that decision for you. It comes down to, to you and yourself. So obviously speak with your family and obviously speak with, with people around that situation. But at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you and, and yourself and your career. Do you know what you had? Um, pretty, uh, Kirky hit it, hit the nail on the head, really. Yeah. Uh, exactly what I would say. Um, yeah, just uh, trust your instincts, and uh, if you feel like going for it, go for it. Um, but at the same time, like like I've said many times, you know, many times, it, it's different for everyone. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Richard Cargo, what age did you first decide you're going to try and make it as a pro hockey player? Um. Ooh. I don't think there was ever a, a day really where I didn't I didn't want to you know not be a hockey player. Um, so I think when I when I started getting success in Sweden, I you know around sixteen seventeen when you I started getting some success, um, I th- I I realised that you know I could you know make a run at it and uh, have a good career. So I'd probably say say around then. But I've always wanted to be a hockey player, so. Yeah, okay. Kaki, was there a need you felt you were going to go pro? Uh, I mean, you know, since I was a kid, all I've wanted to was play hockey. So you know, when, when you know that you can make people make a living off it, that's all my, my goal has ever been. I can't see myself doing anything other than hockey. That includes, you know, after hockey, I don't think I could, I could after my playing career, sorry, I don't think I could do anything else apart from something involving hockey. Hockey is my life and it, it my first love and it's you know it's given me a lot of things in life that I have to be grateful for so okay okay good um Cooper wants to know what running drills would you recommend for a nine year old um running drills there's there's lots of things you can do um you know, I, I think again for someone so young, it's important to to make sure that uh, you know training is is fun and, and enjoyable because it's a lot of it as you get older. So you you don't maybe you don't want to start too young because you don't want to burn out. But uh, I mean, there's lots of stuff you can do, you know, and it, agility drills and and the, but to like make games out of it, you know, games of tag, games of different stuff like that I would I would recommend so uh for for someone that age and you know get get in the park with with your friends and play some football and just enjoy you know being active and and you know when you're when you're that age you don't have to worry about it too much it's it's more as you as you get a little bit older that that stuff sort of comes into it more but just for now just uh enjoy being outside and 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 running around and being being young yeah okay um we're going to go to the last question, guys, right? 
if you had a chance, would you like to be a video with the pro hockey players Oli and Jacob from On the Beach? Bench. What, what bench. was that? On the bench. On the bench. <laughs> on the bench. Sorry. You're uh, getting tired now, aren't you? Yeah. On the bench. <laughs> Uh, you two guys uh, and the, uh, cowboy uh, and stuff. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I don't think I've seen them guys in a while play video, but um, yeah, they were pretty funny when they, when they first started. So. Yeah, it's just a, I, it's just a great, great fun uh, thing. Um, last question, right? We've got through them all. Uh, can you just? And it's from Colin Grubb who's in US of Can you describe the youth culture between, that you've experienced between the UK, North America, or Sweden? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think the difference for, for the youth between, you know, I, I never was there in Sweden at a younger age, but um, I mean, I saw it a bit when I went over for the, for the long spell, but it's just, you know, they're on. They have accessibility to to the ice rink a lot more easier. And even if they don't, um, especially in Canada anyway, the the ponds and lakes freeze over. They can go and skate whenever they feel like it. So uh, I think that is the biggest difference. I mean, you know, kids in England usually. I mean, I I was a, obviously a kid in England. You know, most people play football or or they're out uh, when they get to a certain age, partying and drinking and all that nonsense. So. Um, I think the difference is in North America, it's so hockey focused everywhere you go, every TV you look at, it's hockey, hockey, hockey everywhere. So, um, you know, it's just drilled into them um, from a young age. And um, like I said, they, they, they just have more of an accessibility to it. But that's not to say that um, you should ever look at hockey any differently. Just being from England, I think, is anything, the way I looked at it was just as a, uh, something else to push me and make me make me work harder and make me become a better player was you know they, they have more opportunity than me I'll, I'll, I'll get to the same place that they get um just doing it differently and just you know off, off the back of my own hard work so um you've had quite different experience in europe you know there's a culture differences there yeah i mean it's very similar though to to what kirky said is like just the accessibility that the kids have to 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 the rinks and the facilities that they have um i would say that's the biggest difference and uh you know the the way that the way that they train and it's, it's a very high it's a very competitive uh country when it comes to hockey so um you know the speed and the intensity of the trainings are very similar to to game game like i mean a week of practice will take it out of you. Um, you know, in, in, in Sweden, I found it. They, they love to to really compete and battle against each other, even against, guys, you know, guys in the same team. Um, it, it's very intense when it comes to their training. So uh, that's something I loved, I enjoyed, uh, something I've sort of brought forward with me because um, then you get the best out of everyone when guys are really working the hardest throughout a training session. Um, and then again, like what Kirky said is, there are, you know, I was a, we were both kids in England, uh, hockey players in England, and there are limitations to what you can do. And it's not, you know, as a country, I think we're moving in the right direction, which is really encouraging. Like this call tonight, we never had anything like this, eh, Kirky? No, like, uh, it, it, no. it's so, it's so good. So we're moving in the right direction. It's going, you know, it's growing and growing, which is so great to see and something that I'm really pr I'm proud to be British and to come from this country and to be a hockey player from this country um but yeah there's always things you can be doing when when you know you know be aware that there are kids in other countries that have will unfortunately have more facilities and more accessibility to rinks but you know keep that in mind and use it as fuel as, as Kirky said use it as motivation to 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 train hard when you can and and do what you can with with what you have so and we are done okay guys we've made it through all the questions with liam sam we did tell you some of them would be pretty random <laughs> they're great they're great questions yeah, that was good awesome listen guys um liam sam on behalf of everybody within scottish ice hockey we can't thank you enough for joining us tonight 
Um, I also need to thank Martin Grubb. I never thanked him at the beginning of the webinar. It was Martin that, 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 that reached out to, to Liam and Sam to, uh, to ask if they would join us tonight. Uh, so Spud, thank you very much for that. Um, the kids that are still on the call, I, I can see some of you are getting a little bit sleepy now. It's getting a little bit late. But can we give Liam and Sam a, a little two thumbs up here to say thank you for, for joining us tonight? There we go. Thanks, Good guys. Stuff. Thank you, everyone. Good stuff. I hope everybody. I hope everybody learned something uh, valuable from these two guys tonight. Um, really interesting stories. Um, two contrasting stories. One that one player that, that decided to try Scandinavia at a very young age, and another player that's that's got dreams and aspirations in the NHL. Uh, Liam, Sam, again, thank you very much for giving up your time tonight to come and speak to us. Um, kids, coaches. There's a goalie webinar on tomorrow night with Colin Grubb. I hope you all tune in for that. Um, Colin's especially reaching out to coaches in Scottish ice hockey tomorrow that maybe don't really know or understand a great deal about um, teaching goaltending. So I hope you can all tune in and, and pick up two or three tips uh, from Colin tomorrow. Uh, again, everybody, thank you very much for joining in tonight. We'll see many of you tomorrow and we'll see more of you again next Friday for the next uh, segment of Friday Night Live. Uh, Liam, Sam, if you can just hang on for two minutes. Um, guys, we'll see you all next week. Take care, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.